Hey, family. So I'm sitting in my room uh, in Gambia, uh, just relaxing with your mom is relaxing as well. We're at a guest house. And um, I had to post this video because the plane ride on Sky, on Sky was eventful. I'll say that. Someone asked us when we were at most Mo Twos, they were on the phone talking to Sister Rahima and they asked how was the plane ride? And I said, Oh, it was amazing, you know. And a mom was like, Don't lie, it wasn't amazing. And so I have to give you um his perspective on why it wasn't amazing. And I guess my perspective is, you know, no one's gonna ruin this trip, so everything is amazing. And I had completely forgot about the chaos when we got on the plane. So we get on the plane and we go to our seats, right? And we're in seats 12A and 12B. And as you know, before you get in the plane, you're supposed to pay for your seats if you want them in a certain place. So I wanted, of course, Aman to have a window seat because it's our first trip to the Gambia together. And we're coming from... Uh, Sierra Leone, so it's my first time coming from Sierra Leone to Gambia, so, you know, I was ready. Seats 12A and 12B. So the seats go 12A, B, and C, and then they go like J, K, and L on the other side, right? So there's this traditional African family. At least they said they were family. They could have been brothers and sisters, sister-in-law, whatever. They're still family, right? So it's two elders and an elder gentleman. They're probably like in their 60s, I guess, 60s and above. They're all sitting across um, from us, and they're in the th occupied with the three seats. So when we come to our row to sit in, there's a young guy who has like Sierra Leone, like, you know, badges or something on his clothes. So he must be like someone from the government or representing Sierra Leone that's going to the Gambia. So nevertheless, he's a petite, slim guy, right? Maybe a little taller than me, but definitely slim, very slim. So we come and he's sitting in 12A, which is the window seat. So I'm saying to him, you're in 12A, you're sitting in our seats. And he's like, no, no, this is my seat. So then the steward comes, who's a male flight attendant, he comes and he says, uh, we show him our tickets. And he's telling the guy, no, you're not in your seat. So he's trying to tell the guy, get your ticket out. And of course, he's just like lollygagging. He's every excuse about why he can't move and someone's in his seat. And, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, if somebody's in your seat, what does that have to do with us? If your seat is 12L, which is where this three, these three family members are sitting, so I'm assuming that he probably was trying to be noble, respectful, and gave up his seat. But you don't get to give up your seat and then sit where you want. If you give up your seat, you're supposed to sit in that person's seat. That's how it goes where I come from, right? I thought that was the line, the rule of the airline, airline etiquette, if you will, right? <laughs> Honey, these elders had their own rules, okay? So... When he gave up his seat and decided to sit in our seat, those elders were not budging. Their thing was, we're family, we should be sitting together. And I don't disagree. What I do disagree with is if you did not pay for those seats for your family to sit together, guess what? You end up kind of scattered in the plane and that's no one's fault but your own. And we could blame the airlines because they should not be charging, but we know what's happening. This is what they do. So follow the protocol, get with the program, and sit with your family when you follow the rules, right? That's just the way it goes. And I don't think that's Western thought, right? I think that's just logical if we're following the rules. If the rules are made by Westerners, maybe it is Western thought. However, this is the rules of the airline, right? I'm not making this stuff up. So this brother really does not want to get up out the seat. So I'm saying to him, like, you need to get up. Our seats are 12 A and B. We don't have to bother the elders. Like, that situation is not going to change. But this situation right here, this is going to change because now you're inconveniencing us. So he starts taking pictures by the window. I don't know if he's fronting like he's in first class or he want everybody to think he got a window seat. 
Well, he want people to see he's flying. I don't know what his issue or his malfunction is. He's like in his 20s or 30s. So he's kind of young. So maybe, you know, maybe it's his first flight. I don't know. So I tell him, I'll tell you what. I'll sit in the aisle seat and you can just move to the middle seat. But my son is going to have that window seat because those are our seats. So he reluctantly d says yes, but then he's still acting like he doesn't know he needs to move. So I'm like, get up, get out of the eye, get into the aisle and let him get in and then you can go in. And honey, listen, he got up finally. Amon went in. And when I tell you this man was Amon's heel on Amon's heels, like to make sure he was getting that middle seat, <laughs> I was just like, whatever. So he sat down. I sat down. So now, like I said, he's a small guy, right? But no, now all of a sudden he needs both armrest because he's inconvenienced. And anytime I try to doze off, he's bumping me with his elbow. He's moving all around. I'm just like, thank goodness this is a one hour flight. OK, and that I don't have to deal with this individual any longer because he's really testing my patience at this point. Then he's leaning all across Amon to look out the window. And I'm just and Amon's like, you know, why is this dude in my face? But whatever. We dealt with it. It was an hour. We got off. I completely forgot about it once we got off the plane. My thing was like we in the Gambia. I don't want to hear nothing else going on on the plane. Right. <laughs> So that's our story for our flight to Gambia. It did not ruin the trip for me. It just showed me like, you know, you can't think, take things for granted. It might have been his brother's first trip as well. Um, and that if you're going to change your seat with someone, you take that person's seat. You don't take other people's seat. Because this confusion not only caused confusion for us, but there was a sister that had a baby that had to move like three times because the old man, whatever seat he was in, he didn't check in with anybody. He just got up, took the young boy's seat. The young boy took our seat. Now the old man's seat is empty, but no one knows what it is because he won't give up his ticket. Mind you, the whole point of having assigned seats is so that if something happens on the plane, you can be identified. So you're not only confusing everyone around you and inconveniencing everyone around you, but you're confusing the protocol for the, the flight crew. You're confusing, um, you know, the airline if something happens. Like, so if you're going to switch seats, just go to the seat that you switched. Make it easy for everyone and be agreeable. Be willing to compromise. And for our folks coming from the diaspora, be ready to compromise because you might have paid for a seat. Don't mean you're going to get that seat, right? And you got to decide what's more important to you. So my thing was, let the guy have the seat. Long as Amon got the window, I was fine. And I was on the continent and I was happy. But Amon's just kind of saw it like, no, that was aggravating, you know. Um, I will report in the next video about our little fiasco once we got off the airline bus to go in to check through like immigration and all that. Blessings.